Hi, so for the past two months, I've been playing what I think is the best idol game on the market, Eversol. And for those of you who are not familiar with the game, it is a Korean produced waifu collector with an AFK resource generating system, which means that you are time gated as opposed to being stamina gated to progress through the game. And my guys, for the past one month, I've been trying desperately to quit this game. Huh. I've actually made two videos prior to this one. I wasn't really happy with them. My opinion changed. They'll never be released. But the TLDR is that I would actually rate this game at an 8 out of 10. An A. And honestly, even today, I would still give it the same rating. And so in this video, I want to talk about why exactly I rate this game so highly and why I want to quit. So welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace. Let's get started. The first most obvious thing which isn't unique to this game but does deserve the shout out is the gorgeous art. Like look, I'm a weeb through and through, okay? I like big anime booba, I'm not gonna lie. I also like undead girls in wheelchairs. Nope, that was a joke. Although I know that there are a few of you out there. All I'm trying to say is that the art is exceptionally good and it's what baited me into the game. <sighs> Alright, so the second thing is apparently very, very common in idle games, and that is the insane generosity. On average, I can probably pull about 8 to 13 times a day. For example, before a certain event. Oh, another one, another one, another one. 4% is coming. Ah, no! No! I had about like 65k jemmies, and I'm still up to 11k after burning them all. Sometimes they just straight up give us 10 pulls because of one of the characters' birthdays. When there is an event, we straight up just get a whole bunch of pulls for the stories. We've got friendship pulls as well, which I think does actually have the same rates as the other banners. Although all of this is kind of counteracted by the fact you need like uh, 8 to 10 copies to max out a character. Yeah, honestly, whilst it's really generous and it feels good, I'm not really sure it's a really good thing to praise them for because I'm essentially saying that them exploiting our dopamine mean for a very obvious pulling addiction is good but my god does it feel good on top of that the rate at which we get purple epics the highest rarity in the game is extremely high so from just the gacha alone it's four percent we've got a hard pity at 30 summons on the normal banner and on top of that anytime a new character is released so for example right now it's honglan they get added to every single banner. Like, can you believe that? From the normal summon to the friendship summon to the type summon, if they are that type. Like, I don't know if this is normal among the idle games, but it is the first time that I've experienced this. We've also got guaranteed random epics in which you can collect 60 of these shards and you get a guaranteed epic. Pretty self-explanatory. And the rate at which we get these guys, as you can see, I've already cleared out the shop. It's really freaking fast as well. On top of that, the rarest units in the game, the angel and the demon, are actually earnable in the game over time. So you can see why for Gacha gamers, this game is seemingly perfect, right? But let's let's move on from this insanity. The next thing is standardized equipment. And the reason I want to bring this up is because it's really rare to see a Korean produced game not have us grind for about 10 years to get a piece of equipment with a speed main stat, attack, crit rate, crit damage for substats aligned to the speed set. Like at worst, we have a stat set. So like these are int character equips aligned to a certain set effect. The town system is really custom like if you look at this guy's town, I feel like I'm walking through the streets of Berlin. Now, I haven't really been to Berlin before, but I'm sure if I ever make it there, it will look like this town. The actual gameplay itself is pretty standard. It's essentially 3D pre-con. You can auto, you can manual for harder content, but the TLDR is that the blue bar fills up, you use a skill. If the ultimate fills up, you use another skill, which is an ultimate skill. There are more skills and attack loops, but by and large, that's essentially what the gameplay is like. In terms of the story, it's it's all right, like kind of generic. It's not really on like the level of Blue Archive or Ark Knights or Honkai Impact 3rd. It's passable, but all story cutscenes can be very, very high production and high quality, as you can see. And there is quite a fair bit of voice acting, although you can't really hear it right now. Other than that, the interface itself is pretty clean. The performance is a little bit shaky, but pretty acceptable nowadays, not like at launch. Holy lag. The music is pretty catchy and honestly there isn't exactly very much to fault in terms of the experience itself. Some people may be turned off by the lack of JP voice acting, I personally find it alright, but with all of that being said, you can kind of see like why exactly I would give this game an 8 out of 10 or an A, right? Then what exactly is so frustrating enough for me to want to quit? And so my guys, I call it the Honkai Impact 3rd Syndrome. Or maybe we can just call it game mode bloat. I don't know how many of you have had the chance to play Honkai Impact 3rd, but essentially it has an insane amount of game modes with an insane amount of currencies with an insane amount of things to do, which means it's an insane time sink. And somehow, my guys, somehow, this idle game is giving me a similar experience. So let's start off with the town system. 
First of all, as you can see, there is a dispatch system. You essentially assign your units to go do tasks to get your items. You can use the auto deploy button over here. It's pretty much the only way to kind of like progress your account which will inevitably give you a whole bunch of different buffs and different resources as you can see over here. However, as I mentioned before, you can see how short these tasks actually take. And so that means that you'll want to be logging in quite frequently to keep them going. Now, I'm not saying it's every half an hour or every one hour, but it is about like every four hours that they get refreshed. And on top of that, for your town, you have two dailies. One, which is to clear out 10 monsters at night. So you can see it's nighttime right here. And in the daytime, you actually have to clear out 10 trees. However, after you get past town level 10, so you can see I'm level 11 over here, the amount of both doubles. So I know it says five out of 10 over here. And now the quest is gone because I finished it. But you can see on the minimap, that there are still a whole bunch of different mobs because there are now 20 of them. You could skip these mobs considering I've already finished the daily quest. However, as you can see, each time I'm killing these mobs, they are dropping something. And one of the things that they can actually drop is a pull ticket, a full pull. And so unfortunately, you can see that the generosity of this game starts to become a psychological trap. If they're gonna drop single pull tickets, of course, you're gonna want to do all of them, right? Not just 10, you wanna clear all 20. But on top of that, you can go monster hunting in your friend's town as well. And in your friend's town, there are also another 20 mobs. But on top of that, each time you clear the daily for your friends, you are guaranteed a pull, as you can see right there. And then all of that, you can actually do three times a day for three of your friends. So as you can see, receive help, receive help, or expedition help, two out of a maximum of three. And if that wasn't bad enough, like look at all of these different game modes. First up, we've got a jewel gate, which provides materials to juice up our characters. Then we've got the upcoming guild raid, which hasn't even been released yet. So that's just gonna be even more work every single day. We've got a dimensional labyrinth, which actually resets every two days, but this one gives you the currency to go buy that angel unit. We've got another dungeon called Hall of Memories that resets once a week that gives you enormous upgrade materials as well as pulls. Like look at all of that. We've got an arena system. So it's five hits per day. And these coins that you get from arena, you can see these guys over here, they contribute to you being able to buy the demon unit. And of course we have the events in which you have to do a couple of stages a day in which the rewards are not only skins, free skins. And I don't think there are any paid skins right now, but there are also full copies of epic characters. It was honestly the last event that made me almost quit. It had us essentially doing five raids a day. And the issue was the rewards were giga crap. Like literally everything that you do in this game, you'll be rewarded quite handsomely for it. And there are just so many things to do. Like look at this, straight up 10 pull right there. And the worst part of all of this is, is that the devs are showing signs of adding time-saving quality of life updates. Like for example, in this event, they've actually implemented a skip button, which gives me hope, right? This is probably the thing that is actually keeping me here because if they could add more of this quality of life for the time savers, I could definitely see myself playing this game for ages. But the thing is, I got into gacha games because I wanted small bits of progression for small bits of time. The time that it takes for me to do all of these tasks, I only talked about the daily tasks, not even the permanent game modes. The time it takes for me to do all of those things, all of those dailies, all of those tasks, is pretty much the same amount of time that it takes for me to do all of the dailies in all of my other games combined. And so my guys, for those of you who are looking for a main game, I do think that this is it. But for somebody like me, a depressed, semi-functional adult who is somehow still alive, you can see why it makes me want to quit, right? Because my god, it's not feeling very idle. And so as I said before, I did give it an 8 out of 10, which would translate over to an A. And after all of that, you can see why I am also unwilling to downgrade that score. It is objectively, fundamentally, a very, very good game. It did 8 million in revenue in January, as well as about 1.4 million downloads, I think. So I would say give it a shot if you haven't already. But what I do want to say is that these guys really know how to FOMO me. So yeah, honestly, that's it. To this day, I'm still trying to figure out whether I want to drop the game or not because of that hope. If the developers are going to be coming out with like even more quality of life time savers, I'll probably be saying this in like three years time once I've broken down again because of gacha game overload. But the TLDR is, is that it's a really good game. It just takes way too much time. And the devs are also showing a little bit of initiative in trying to reduce that time, giving me hope. I don't know guys, tell me what you would do. Let me know in the comments down below because I am struggling. With that said though, that is going to bring us to the end of the video. And you already know the works. Like, subscribe, notification bell on. And so it's all good things must come to an end. My name is Lace. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.